Welcome back. In this section, you will learn about object oriented programming. But the first step is to know what is object oriented programming. So let's try to understand. The two most important concepts in object oriented programming are the classes and the object. In the broadest term, an object is a thing both tangible and intangible that we can imagine. For example, a student, or a car, or a bus, a home, mobile phone, television, computer, anything that we can touch or anything that we can feel like air, gas, smell, both of these are objects. A program written in object-oriented style will consist of interacting objects. For a program to keep track of student, resident of a college, dormitory, or or sleeping room, we may have many objects like student, room, and floor. For another program to keep track of customers and inventory for a bicycle shop, we may have customers, bicycles, and many other type of objects. An object is comprised of data and operations that manipulate these data. For example, a student object may consist of data such as name, gender, birth date, home address, phone number, and age. And operation for assigning and changing these data value. But to create an object, we need a class. Now, what is a class? Well, a class is like a blueprint that dictates what object can and cannot do. You can think of a class as a blueprint. For example, if you want to create a building, you need a blueprint of that building. And once you have a blueprint of a building, blueprint of a building, you can create as many houses as you want through that blueprint. Now, classes is like a data type of your own. We have used a lot of data type, right? Integer, float, string, list, tuples. If you want to create your own data type, like a student data type, you can do it using classes. But remember, it's similar to it, not exactly same. Now, once you have created a class, you can create one or more objects through that class. By class, I mean a blueprint of the object. Now, let's understand object-oriented approach in detail. Let's say you want to create a game. A game that contains a car. Car. Shop. Now, this car will have some information like the body color of the car, number of seats, speed of car, name of the car. Now, this information in class is called attributes. To create a car in a game, we need a class. Now, this class needs some information about the car. This information is called attributes. But we don't need an object that could only look like a car. But we also need that the car should also move. It should also stop. It should also have other features like other cars. Now, this in classes is called methods. Methods describe the behavior of an object, in this case, behavior of a car. Attributes describe the information about the object, in this case, information about the car. Once we create a class, which is like a blueprint, now blueprint or class need information, as well as it also need information about the behavior, we can implement attributes and methods through which we can create an object that will not only look like a car, but also behave like a car. There are four main pillars of object-oriented approach that you must understand. The first pillar is inheritance. Now, what is inheritance? Inheritance in object-oriented programming, programming, we use a mechanism called inheritance to design two or more entities that are different but share many common features. 
For example, the game you are creating might have different types of car. Let's say pickup and truck. So what you can do is you can create two different classes for that two type of cars. But what we can do is we can reduce our line of code. By reducing, I mean we can create a class car and in that class we can put all the information that is common between these two classes. And then later on we can use the common information that is attributes and methods through a car class. This is called inheritance. So once you create a separate class for the common attributes and methods, you can use it in both other classes. Like the common attributes can be wheels, doors, mirrors, and other. The second pillar of object-oriented approach is called abstraction. Abstraction is the concept of object-oriented programming that shows on the essential attributes and hides unnecessary information. The main purpose of abstraction is hiding the unnecessary details from the users. Abstraction is selecting data from a larger pool to show only relevant details of the object to the user. It helps in reducing programming complexity and effort. It is one of the most important concepts of OOPS, which is object oriented programming. Now, let's say you are playing the game that is built up by some programmer in that game you have a car and you need to select a car so while selecting a car you only need information like color of the car speed of the car name of the car and some other details you don't need to worry about how this car is implemented that's how abstraction works. it hides unnecessary information for the user and only show the relevant information. The third pillar of object-oriented approach is polymorphism. It describes the concept that different classes can be used with the same interface. So in our previous example, once we create our two classes for two different types of car, we can only create one object of the car and we can access both of these classes. Now, in OOP, you need to create different objects or separate objects for each class. But using polymorphism, you can create one object that can be used with multiple classes. The last pillar of object-oriented approach is encapsulation. It is the way of hiding data from user. There might be some data which could be private data that we don't want our users to access for this we can use encapsulation like there could be some attributes and methods that we don't want to be used by the user for this we can use encapsulation the four main pillars of object oriented approach serve two main purposes number number one is to reducing the lines of the code and second is to make it more accessible while hiding the information as well as making private information. In next videos, we will implement all of these concepts. So if you don't understand it well right now, it's quite normal. Because if you are learning object oriented first time, it's quite difficult to understand. In the next video, we will implement these concepts in Python and you will better understand it. So don't wait, click next, and I will see you in the next video.